Hey guys, welcome to another Euphoria recap, episode six. So glad that you are here. So glad that you are here. So glad that you're here. How about that? We're all here. We're all getting through this together. So thank you for joining us on this special episode six recap of Euphoria season mm -hmm. two. And um, what to where, say? What to say? <laughs> where to begin? Um, well, this after show is sponsored by the Hollywood Critics Association, which Ryan and I are both members of. They have a ton of really cool after shows too for all these different shows, Euphoria yeah. being one of them. So if you watch TV or have any sort of streaming service app, highly you're a human, you know. <laughs> if you're like us, um, highly recommend just checking out a bunch of HCA's YouTube after shows. They're really great. Um, yeah, they're all yeah. on here on this YouTube channel. Go ahead, check them out, subscribe. Um, yeah, my name is Ryan. My name is Morgan. Uh, we're brother and sister, and we run the movie review site Cinemacy, uh, which is a movie review site that covers indie, art house, foreign, classic films, all of the latest stuff that's coming out. If you're into new, exciting movies, definitely check us out on there or on our socials, uh, at Cinemacy on Instagram, at Cinemacy Speaks on Twitter. And with, uh, yeah, the, the last little order of business before we jump right into this uh, really fun episode... Ooh. Fun? <laughs> uh, well, we'll get there. Okay. Um, we are also happy to be sponsored in part by the Happy Labs CBD company. They're a CBD company based out of Manhattan Beach, California. Um, they're fantastic people. They create CBD products that um, help you live your happiest, healthiest life uh, with relaxation, restorative properties. Um, I'm personally a fan of the Happy Labs pressed pill, um, the the chill pill, as it's called. Go check out the site. It's it's great. It's a CBD for anxiety, for sort of pain medication. Um, but, you know, we're not doctors. We're not in the medical field, uh, but I can say it's helped me a lot. Check out thehappylabs.com. Use promo code HCA for 20% off any of your purchases. And now without further ado, Let's launch into episode six of Euphoria. Oof. Okay. Well, I will say right off the bat, we ended the last episode not knowing if it was Rue who was going to walk into the kitchen. Yeah. And it was Rue who walked into the kitchen. Full circle. Which is great. I Relieving, I think, for all of us. <laughs> to be like, okay, girl, <laughs> sit down, take a nap. Like you went through hell and back. Yep. Um, Along with a lot of other people too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was insane. But seeing her back at home was nice. I mean, it, I felt a sense of, of calm wash over me. And I, maybe that was part of the CBD too. I don't know of just being like, okay, this is good. Well, it was good to see that she was now home and that she hadn't spiraled into any other danger. We didn't know what was going to happen to her with having left Lori's house and all the destruction that happened, at least now that she's home, it shows that she is, wanting to uh that she's getting to that she has hope in herself which yeah. is what Ali referred to a little bit later on but that she is looking to um to live she is gonna fight this thing out she's gonna she's trying to get clean um and she's at home with her support system who is still there uh her mother and and sister oh, yeah and so it's it was as reassuring for sure that she came home in this episode. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and the first time I think I've seen in this season that she feels something. And that was a big issue that I had in the last episode of Rue is just on this war path and she doesn't care who she's hurting, of course, because she is in an addict's mind yeah. and doesn't realize what she's doing. But it was so nice to hear her say the words, I'm sorry. Yes. To Ali on the phone when she calls him. That's I I think that's the first time she has said that this season. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Wow. You you're emoting. You feel bad. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. finally confronting those emotions, mm -hmm. which is I loved seeing that. It was hell to go through. This withdrawal is crazy. Yeah. Um, we should mention the episode title, A Thousand Little Trees of Blood. So all these episode titles are very thought provoking and they're based on literature. They're based on uh, pieces of art and music. Apparently this title, A Thousand Little Trees of Blood um, is a reference to a quote from, I suppose he is a poet, Frederico Garcia Lorca's poem, The Martyrdom. Hmm. Um, and 
it's it's the martyrdom of Saint Eulalia, to be more specific. Uh, Eulalia kind of sounds like Euphoria, doesn't it? Oh, uh, um, it does. I, <laughs> it, maybe there's something there. Likely, I, it's a very long poem that I didn't have the chance to read through as the episode has just ended. And there's a lot of stuff <laughs> that you can unpack. Google is good for it reading things after the fact. Yeah, so Sam Google Levinson, it. <laughs> exactly. Sam Levinson is just a smart guy and he's making a lot of references, but it sounds like, yeah, Rue is a martyr. She's going through this pain right now, a thousand little trees of blood. It, to me, it just seems, it, it makes me think of trees are, you know, it's their life and they're starting anew maybe, but not without some pain, some blood that's happening. So uh, I'm, I'm feeling something along those lines. Yeah, I also kind of get the sense that it, or it, it reminds me of that phrase of like, you know, a thousand paper cuts, but like the, mm, the death by a thousand paper cuts, exactly. but also so many small moments. Exactly. Right? So that's kind of Rue at this point too, with her friend's family that she's, yeah. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know. So many different people have been affected. And now she's finally committing to herself to get clean, get sober. And how does the episode start? But this excruciating sequence of her trying to unwrap a singular Jolly Rancher, a mm. watermelon Jolly Rancher. And My mouth's watering. <laughs> life has never been harder for a person uh, in that moment. It, the the way that it's so silent and quiet the last episode was pure chaos and now yeah. it's all the way uh, back to to silence and all she's trying to do is just to reach for this jolly rancher and just unwrap it and she can't do it and the crinkling of that paper was just so hard to have to hear it you just felt this like unease. that plastic wrapper the plastic wrapper yeah. was it was the sound design in that beginning sequence was just like almost nails on a chalkboard. It was so hard because of just the the pain that she's going through. We know that she has a full on withdrawals right now um, and she can't get through it. So it's mm -hmm. kind of tough. It's like, she's a kid wanting candy. She wants, I mean, the candy is like, it's hope. Maybe the, the candy, not to read too much into a Jolly Rancher, <laughs> but uh, it's interesting when she finally does unravel it, when she finally is able to do it and pop it in her mouth. Yeah. She's talking to Ali. Ali forgives her. There's a few things that happened before that with uh, her mom, who is trying to support her. Mm -hmm. Gia is in the house too, but Rue is just going through the uh, through the thick of it. She's shaking, kind of like a continuation of the last episode. The you know, stand still like a hummingbird. She's still shaking mm -hmm. and trying to stand still, um, but but she is is yeah where she's at yeah well and what was interesting too is i noticed that the title card was up for a long time like mm, it said yeah. euphoria over her for a while which was interesting maybe that was just so we could all as an audience just kind of exhale and be like okay uh, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yes something Thank about it that. felt longer this time yeah she's more like living in the present moment now too and to see yeah so going back to that jolly rancher that she's finally able to unwrap and pop her mouth it happens when she calls ollie very emotional moment because the last time she saw him she uh she told him she told him off she used the most vulnerable moment of his life his most shameful moment him being uh, a, a drug user and how that negatively affected his family mm -hmm. threw it back at him. And, you know, she, he's her sponsor and that's, the, he, he didn't deserve that. He used that in the confidence, but what did you think when she called him, asked for, or said that she was sorry. And he says, I forgive you. I mean, I'll just say that I felt so much love and I felt like so much love for Ali yeah. and Coleman Domingo is just like, he's a all, saint. Well, yeah, <laughs> maybe he's the saint in this poem that goes back. Maybe you know, there's, there's a lot of sainthood, a lot of people doing well. Yeah. It, it was just, I was so relieved. Same. I knew, I knew he would forgive her though, because he's, he is that type of person who truly wants the best for Rue knows that she went through a hard time and won't give up on her. So I wasn't surprised when he said that so quickly, but for Rue, the relief and when her voice cracked, I think when she said, I'm sorry, like it yeah. kind of had an upward inflection and that just, yeah, made me so happy. And this is, she needed one person to accept her and understand that she wants to be a changed person. And hopefully that gives her the confidence to stay sober and to try and stay clean and 
realize that she is a worthy person and she deserves to live and things like that. So it was, it was very powerful. Incredible opening. Yeah. Um, but this episode, it doesn't just end with Rue. It's not just an entire, you know, we're, we're getting, we're going back to all the characters yeah, that, missed them you've the last missed, one. <laughs> that we've missed that everyone's missed. You know, we, we read, you know, everything that's that, you guys are saying that the internet's saying, and so much of this season is how do we balance all of this stuff? How do we balance Rue? How do we balance all of these other characters? And this episode definitely like tied up all of these, or it got all the trains back yep. on the right track. Totally was thinking the same thing. So many breadcrumbs were all just scooped up into this episode. <laughs> and also this, in my mind, I was reading this like it was a Mother's Day episode. Like for whatever reason, yeah. every mom had their moment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and we saw all of these moms too. Yeah. We haven't seen so many moms. We haven't seen Nate's mom, you know, say like more yeah. than two words, you know, the whole two seasons worth. Right. And now this episode was a, a yeah. Mother's Day. A Mother's Day. A really kind <laughs> of odd one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Relationships with mothers. They're all tested here in all these different forms. And I like. And that was interesting, too, because we haven't seen so many parents be the focal point of the show. It's like the kids have just always been able to have these very tragically insane lives uh, without the parents knowing or oversight. But now yeah. the season's like, OK, actually, the the ones who are closest to you or 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 your mothers are there and they have their own relationship. Right. They may be enablers because every mother except for Rue's mom is like pouring their daughter a drink or <laughs> yeah, son. Right. Like, but you're in high school. I I mean, yeah. I think mom knew we maybe had a beer in high school, but she would have never have offered us a glass of wine. Yeah, I don't not know. Not in the like, middle of the day. There's no ice cream and wine while I'm drinking my whiskey yeah, meat in the middle of the exactly. day talking about like you know, yeah, your father was a mistake and uh, you were, <laughs> you're just a terrible son. It there was, was funny. Not a lot of, of that. Well, and even the, the babysitter, um, yeah. she's giving Maddie wine. I'm like, what are, what world are we in? Well, yeah. Yeah. She's 18 that we learned in this episode. Uh, yes. I was going to say, right? okay. So there were some ages that were clarified maybe <laughs> right. in the script writing. They're like, oh, crap we have to like clarify some of these lines like is she a pedo and you know, this sort of thing um but i mean creepy that she had the the camera on the clock we'll get there so there's okay, we'll get there i'm just excited i can't absolutely wait. yeah there's there were so many things so what happens after uh rue and well ollie comes comes over and he has the groceries he's gonna make him dinner yeah like oh what a saint gotta love him and i love how he the, how they wrote his character like oh no i'm not gonna like like i'm not gonna cook with you Rue. like you stink like get out of here yeah. and like to the mom too like very oh, tough love yeah yeah and of course he's saying he's doing this in a way that like no you guys like are you've been going through a lot i don't want you to help cook as well but he's using it as a moment to get closer to gia who is also yes. like if there's one more character that like could be included in all this it's like sam levinson the writer director and like hasn't forgotten about how how many people this affects, how many people addiction affects and to see Gia be represented too. And to all these singularly put that focus on her was I think very special. Yeah. And so nice for us to see because it's the first time Gia is actually being seen by someone else and saying, okay, how does this affect you? For every episode up until this point, she's been just the one crying or in her room or scared and fragile and now Ali is seeing her as her own person. And and it's so like, it's about time. Yeah. Have you seen, Gia. have you seen the thing like on the internet where they say that like Gia is basically like only ever in the show when she's like looking like yes, through a, exactly. a door frame or behind a door, which is how the episode started too. Right. I feel like there's a self knowing going on there um, until finally, as yeah, she is involved in the conversation, the dialogue, yeah. how do you feel? And just Ollie being oh, what a good guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just shows you can make amends and you can just you can really impact people yeah. for the better. So, so that was great. And then we, then we cut to Nate. So Nate's the fallout. He's doing some, yeah. so he's doing a workout and Rue is doing the voiceover for like the first half of the episode, maybe the first third or something. Yeah. And she points out that Nate, when he's working out, doesn't he puts his phone on silent. He didn't get any of these missed calls, the 38 missed calls from, from Cassie. Cassie. And then more <laughs> troubling, the nun from Maddie. So he mm -hmm. knows that 
that this is fun, that this is out, that him and Cassie hooking up is now n- known to Maddie too. Yeah. Um, and that's so true though. Like when you know someone's mad at you and they give you the silent treatment, you're just, what are they thinking? That is <laughs> definitely scarier than someone yelling at you in your face. Right. So she knows what she's doing Yep. by not speaking to him. Mm-hmm. And I have to admit that like, you know, with everything going on with like Rue being the central focus of the episode and so many other things just happening, I forgot that, yeah, Maddie still has the disc of Cal yes. with Jules. She's yes. watched this. She knows what's on here. She knows that Nate and Jules had, you know, a thing too, like an online relationship. She has all of these, she has the gasoline and now Nate handed her the match. Like <laughs> it's, yeah. it's basically, and we see that that is what she has in her head. Mm -hmm. Those wheels are starting to turn. I mean, what's also happening now is that Nate's whole household is like trying to uh, just return to normalcy or they're showing how the house is without the man of the house. His mom is regressing to her high school self. She's drinking, she's smoking, she's cursing. She's saying, I used to be hot. And how sad for her to immediately regress to who you were in high school. Yeah. And there was a very interesting line that Nate says at a certain point, he says like, stop, you're acting like a teenager, which is so true. He is a teenager and they're doing all of this. It's like, he's Mm -hmm. judging her for being a teenager and yet he's doing, and all of his friends are the exact same way. Right. He wants her to be an adult. His mom. His mom. Yeah. Which she should be. I mean, that's tough when your parent tries to be your friend in that way. It's very. Yeah. Joking about, off. I mean, the really, really disturbing, you know, what happened in season one with Nate, like she's joking about how she doesn't like Maddie and how she was like laughing at the fact that Nate was like assaulted Maddie and choked her. And, yeah. and the yeah. mom is just kind of laughing that off. Like, yeah, well, do you, you know, you seem like easy to like, don't start choking me now. Ha ha ha. And it's really troubling, but Nate knows how to respond to it. He's, he has that anger and she's yeah. trying to like be his friend, but she's probably also drunk. And the fact mm-hmm. that he's just like sitting there, like drinking this like whiskey meat, looking like he's like 55 years old <laughs> and he's probably like 18. <laughs> it's just like speaks to how much he's had to grow up. In yeah, that moment. Absolutely. That that was pretty wild. I mean, so many, yeah, going back to what you were saying, all of the mothers in this episode, um, a lot of central relation or central scenes happening within the kitchen, and also a lot of moments where uh the like knives were in the play, whether that was mm-hmm. something just to put like there to create unease. Uh-huh. I think it most specifically popped out when. Cassie's mom is saying to Lexi, hide the knives <laughs> in the bushes. In the bushes. <laughs> like, really? Like <laughs> in the bushes? Like, you That's know. That's a lot of knives. A, That's a, she had a huge ton bowl of knives. knives. Yeah, god dang. Like <laughs> that that was like, yeah, emerald, you know, chef worthy knives. <laughs> like, you don't put them in a bag and you don't like just put them in, you know, your closet or something. Like right. in the bushes, they're gonna get dirty. And who really wants that? But then once that was pointed out or once they had that in the episode I was looking for that and there was like the the block of knives in Nate and his mom's uh, yeah. kitchen and then even in Rue in her mom's kitchen they're yep. all doing cooking in like the kitchen is where it's all yeah. happening apparently I will say Cassie and Lexi's mom though is my favorite mom in she- of all the moms she is <laughs> so funny and her lines <laughs> Is she just, it truly is comedy. Like yeah, they write God. comedy for her. Yeah, it's great. Especially when the one where she's sitting on the couch and her foot's up on the table and she has another glass of wine and just, just yelling back at Cassie. Trying to like actually. So chaotic. Yeah. Like she's yelling back at her. She's trying to instill just like rationalization in right. her. She's trying to say like, you need to calm down and what you did, like, you have to understand your role in this. She's trying to at least, like, level with her or connect with her in, in that way. It's, yeah. it's different from, like, the They're shouty the same. Abusive. They're so the same. So, yeah. uh, which, you know, I, I just I know another my millionaire matchmaker yeah. with for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with her one, yeah, Lexi's just in the background. Just, oh, poor Lexi. You know, getting all of this inspiration for her play, which may or may not 
happen now right. that she has a change of conscience of oh i'm not sure how cassie being second thoughts very unstable is going to take all of this did that make you happy when she said maybe i won't do the play it's built up so much <laughs> now that i just i gotta see the play now yeah like, we gotta see the play and it's going to be the season finale it is for it's, sure it's, it's it can't not be and that's going to trigger every everyone even more so in yeah in, in flame well interesting though how she was when she was telling fez about the yeah. play how stand by me was a reference right which is interesting because i that seems so pure and good <laughs> and her friends are not that so right well that's maybe lexi's interpretation she is the more pure hearted one and she sees this like her friends as like, this is a classic coming of age story. Oh. Um, I don't know, maybe that, that would be her, I think, interpretation of all of this. She would see it yeah. in this fantasy, uh, like scrubbed and like, oh yeah, a little more fantastical. That is version. true. She did say that it was something where her, her friends are growing up and then growing apart, which happens all the time in so many friend groups. So it could be something that's maybe not so specific on, the struggles of each of her friends, but more of just her looking back and, you know, I don't know, wistfulness or something for the past and, mm -hmm. and something a little bit more. Yeah. More sweet. We'll see. Yeah. Like a Jolly Rancher. We'll see. Right. <laughs> like it's there and you just gotta, gotta unwrap it. Um, so let's talk about Kat. Let's yeah, let's talk about Kat. She's back and she had her her most pivotal moment in the season, I think, so far. Yeah, finally. It was short and it was sweet, like a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I won't exhaust that metaphor. We're done. And we're done. She okay. Make your case for Kat right here. I really I'm slightly just disappointed in the fact that that was the only scene we got of her. Because she was, it wasn't very nice. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was, oh, it was brutal. And you feel for Ethan. Absolutely. And <laughs> he gets it. But you've also, I feel like we've all kind of been in that situation, not to that extreme, but where you want to say something and then you kind of realize, oh, actually, no, I don't because I, I, I can't for whatever reason. I just don't feel comfortable. I don't feel safe saying this. Mm -hmm. But the lies and then just, not feeling any sort of shame until he leaves. And then she right. kind of does this. But... You, yeah, it's 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 when he leaves and she knows this whole time. Like yeah. he knows, she knows. She's just unable to admit in her heart that she just wants to break up with him because she, well, because of her own reasons, whatever right. they are, she just is having uh, the self-esteem or it's whatever it is, she's just not finding that, She's broken up. With yeah. Well, and it's, it's funny. Sometimes people do this in relationships where if you don't want to be the one to break up with someone, you want them to break up with you. So you don't yeah. feel like the bad guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you act really mean. You're right. Towards your you boyfriend or girlfriend. Mean. You act mean and distant. And mm -hmm. she was kind of doing that. And then of course it's like, oh, so you want to break up with me? Yeah. Or, and then he, Ethan ultimately ended up breaking up with her, right. but that's what she wanted all along. Yeah. And I, it was really funny that it started with her saying that she had this brain tumor yeah. that she said that she has it wasn't even a, tumor, a, brain it was a brain disorder. Brain disorder. I think it's terminal. <laughs> <laughs> and Ethan's like, uh, wait, why did you like say this was an emergency? So I had to leave rehearsal um, yeah. and to come here and 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 oh it, but yeah so cringeworthy this is how people are i like how she uh it, she almost did this like double gaslighting thing where she's oh, totally. saying like well that's just your experience and ethan is just the whole time and this is like the first time i think he's talked in the whole season right. too i don't think we've heard him talk <laughs> until now and yeah Couple just words. heartbreaking that he knows what's going on he's like i feel like you however he said it was just exactly the the tr Honest. spot on yeah like i feel like you wanted to break up with me but now you're saying this thing about your uh, brain disorder and now you're like finding my skepticism as a way to 
break up with me or something. And she's like, that's your experience. And she's like, I think that you're gaslighting me into like gaslighting you or something. It was a double gaslight, yeah. which I hadn't seen before. So props to Kat for pulling off the <laughs> double gaslight, but she didn't really pull it off because, you know, he ends up breaking up with her and she's, that was pretty, pretty sad. Um, on the whole of it, it's just, you know, like Cause she didn't do it well. I mean, there's a good way to break up with someone where both parties leave like bummed, of course, but not uh, they don't feel awful about themselves usually yeah. i don't know but uh <laughs> you tell us your I mean... love life and uh the, the line is open now call now drop us a comment if you want me to uh give you relationship advice <laughs> just kidding please don't um but yeah i mean she clearly handled that not well she knows it and i hope that doesn't push her towards a downward spiral because that would just be hard to watch because I but, mean, this season, Kat's storyline has been very minuscule at best, and it's yeah. too bad. Hopefully this, I mean, for the sake of her character in the show, though, like, will propel her into something interesting. Like, she yeah. can either just, we never hear from her again, there's a lot of other characters, but maybe this and how she deals with her uh, newfound sort of depression and misplaced emotions, maybe this, you know, is going to make her do something just as crazy as being a webcam girl like yeah, she did in the first season and that's like it's at least storytelling that we want to see like how does one react instead of just not reacting at all yeah true i agree so this is all just ripe stuff for the play and who knows maybe ethan watt went right back to rehearsal <laughs> and said well speaking of the play uh and tying up loose ends sort of fez and Lexi right. are hanging out again. It, felt like it took every... four episodes or five episodes to finally make that happen again. Yeah, it felt like every time. I mean, well, wasn't it from like New Year's, like the very first episode yeah, but... that they like hadn't hung out? because She went to the separate? convenience store. Oh, right. But that, that was just to buy like a water to just yeah. to see him. But to it wasn't a hangout. Yeah, true. This so is this... the first time they've at least... That we've seen it felt like every time in this episode where like characters that were back in in our lives or back in the story it was like oh yay good they're fez and lexi are at least back together so it's tying back to what they the, the groundwork they laid yes. and so funny to see fez just continue to be such like a heart of gold kind of guy he's just a he's a very simple drug dealer you know yeah. he, he loves he, he, you can tell that his attraction towards Lexi is that he just genuinely likes her for the normalcy, for the kindness and for who she is. It's such a 180 from his uh, drug dealing gangster upbringing life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's so funny that then they, yeah, Lexi says, well, stand by me. He's in, he's in, invested in her play. She right. says it's like based on stand by me. He says, um, what that he thinks his grandma has a copy of it on the DVD, which when he said that, I was like, oh, the grandma from right. uh, the first episode, <laughs> like everyone's coming back. It's a reunion. Yeah. Even mentioning that I was like, oh, the grandma, that's right. And she Faye was, was back. Right. So everyone is, we're, we're all here. <laughs> Gang is uh, all here. <laughs> <laughs> so that was funny. He's like having a blunt while watching Stand By Me. And uh, I mean, yeah, eventually cutting to that, what was, I feel like the central part of the episode, maybe like literally the center of it was the, the montage of stand by me and all of the characters that were, that are going through it, that mm -hmm. need someone to stand by them. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was, I was about Poetic. to start <laughs> singing a little line, but copyright probably. For this <laughs> one, so, you know, the song. Um, yeah. So that, that was, that was a, uh, that was good to at least see them hanging out, um, continuing yeah. that. What do you think about that relationship? Do you think it's healthy? Because when we, when Cassie was also like, you know, going crazy inside the house too, Lexi was being more defensive in for Fez, right. saying, "Oh, that's why you told Cal about Fez and you know, like threatened him because, um, because." Well, where was I going with this? Well, so she was just defensive. And what I think about their relationship. Yes. I, yes. I like, I think they oddly fit each other. Um, and they can both help each other be maybe a little bit more themselves, if that makes sense. But 
also I'm worried for Lexi because news that cops are asking about mouse. Yep. And Lexi's now finding herself entangled with this unknowingly. Yes. Being around Fez as a liability for her own life. Right. And as much as I would like to ship their relationship, I don't think I can just for Lexi's safety. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Fez is for as nice of kind a person as he is. He's the kind of guy that would just, you know, reach over and hold her hands. Like, mm -hmm. and that's the, I'm like, oh, how touch. And they were still so sweet. far apart on the couch. Right. It was it like was, a long reach over. <laughs> I was, was I was actually cute. wondering because they were so far apart in my mind. I was like, okay, this is the moment where he would like, where they would kiss. Like, is there going to be like an awkward scooching closer uh -huh. to each other? Because they're pretty far apart. Yeah. But just the fact that it was six feet, maybe it's COVID. <laughs> yeah. 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 They were compliant. <laughs> um, so that's, that's nice. That just warms your heart to, you love to see it. Yeah. Um, I suppose. Well, okay. So Cassie. Yeah. Uh, gets, I, I think it maybe was after a little bit later in the episode, but I, the one image I can't get out of my mind is her with the Corks wine Corks. opener the yeah. Corks, yeah and just like trying to like what do you right she her mom said it best like you need a fucking exorcism <laughs> yeah, that was the best <laughs> button that was truly like what i would see in a comedy like right. oh she needs a fucking exorcism <laughs> because and that's how she's talking about her daughter right <laughs> and she is so manic but cassie was also saying I think really valid stuff. Like everyone is entitled to their, their truth, their opinion. And when Cassie was saying like, I mean, clearly she's in the wrong here. She's trying to split hairs of mm -hmm. like girl code. She's trying to split yeah. those hairs of like, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't have sex with my friend's ex-boyfriend because, or my, her boyfriend, because they were broken up. And like, that's the key difference. And everyone's like, no, that's, you know, you don't go there. And <laughs> right. she's saying, well, are, aren't I entitled to like, who's on my side? Um, she, she even brings up Rue, right? She's saying that like, she basically point blank says like Rue hasn't had as tough of a life as they have. Rue's father died from, uh, cancer and, uh, Lexi and Nate's dad, uh, walked out on them. And so mm -hmm. they also don't have a dad. She doesn't have a dad yeah. and she's looking for sympathy and connection as well in the same way that Rue is. And it's kind of like a scapegoat because she knows or she's just not willing to admit it, but she's bringing up a lot of emotions. And she even says about like her self-esteem issues. Um, mm -hmm. She's like, you don't have to say it. Or, she, or the mom, I think says like, I, I never said anything. She says, you don't have to say it. It's how they like look at her. And she is just unwell. Yeah. Which is too bad. Cause I think in, in, her personal life, Sydney Sweeney, I know in the first season, she was getting a ton of hate messages and being bullied a bunch. People were saying, Oh, you're ugly, which have you seen Sydney Sweeney? Like she is not. <laughs> yeah, that's the definition of a troll. That. That's like quite literally. Yeah, but I'm sure that she took some of that just personal experience from the first season dealing with that and brought it into her character this season because she just she looks like she is broken yeah. every single episode. She just tears. Puffy eyes. My favorite shot, which I think we'll get back to when we do our categories, is her in the bathtub with yeah. a face mask. And yeah. there's just like dried tears down the face mask. Yeah, it looks like the Joker or it looks totally. like one of those like sad and happy, like the drama masks or something. Yeah. And this is the same girl who earlier in the season was being so precise about her skincare and her mm -hmm. wellness and all that stuff. And then she just looks, yeah, like a clown or something. Exactly. And ends up back in a bathtub. Like that was the first episode. She's hiding kind of right. in that. And so it's just yeah. everything was kind of coming back in yeah. this episode for yeah. whatever reason. But, yeah, great point. Um, thank you. Is she yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well written. I, <laughs> uh, it, it, that's so true. And the heart goes out to Cassie. Mm, I know. She, of course, is uh one of the 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 legs of this uh love triangle that's now uh, that involves uh nate and maddie let's talk about maddie let's talk about maddie and the babysitter the maddie and the babysitter um yeah let's so maddie is uh she's she's so she's dealing with her best friend 
uh, cheating on her, her with her, you know, like ex-boyfriend. Yeah, she's lost boyfriend. the two closest people in her life that she thought she had. Yeah. What is that? Uh, must be tough. <laughs> Maddie says, like, I think I want to actually murder her. Like, no, <laughs> but like, really, like, I think like one that like shocks the nation. Her <laughs> line delivery is so great. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, she's back at the babysitter's house. I feel like I was thinking about this. Do you think that there's going to be a, like, a rager that she throws at that house when Ooh. she's away and like she'll throw this big party and the after party be... for the play <laughs> right all the <laughs> drama kids will be there it's gonna be lit um, but what we learned was that that house isn't as um safe as she thought because that super creepy shot of the camera clock she you know the mom says we'll be home in 15 minutes um zooms in on the clock and there's a little camera there so yeah. all the times that Maddie's been, you know, dressing in like changing into her dresses and stuff yeah. like that. She is being watched by the mom. She's being watched by Nate, you know, a little bit later. But mm. she, and that's why the mom hasn't called her on a that's why she hasn't stopped. She knows right. that she's doing this, yeah. but she's it, it, it's Boyer building. Stick. Yeah, she's enjoying this. And it was interesting that this did come back around in this episode, because when that first came up with the babysitter or with the the wife the men and mother being kind of sexually forward with maddie yeah it's like oh huh. set me up please yeah and then it was never spoken about again or alluded to it's like oh that was weird okay but now they're getting close she's like oh when you're 18 yeah, like you're you legal wine and let me let's swim together like, yeah that's normal right it's what's happening here so <laughs> mm -hmm. maddie needs to we'll be see she needs to be uh safe and she's not that right now because even though she has the upper hand in this relationship with Nate uh she has the disc that has you know the evidence of Cal and Jules that's that doesn't make her safe in fact that uh, makes her the very opposite and she is a target quite literally um as as we soon see uh Nate is just completely like unhinged he's I was just drinking. gonna say unhinged that's a good word okay. <laughs> that's exactly it yeah it's got to be in the script just like <laughs> he unhingingly drives to uh maddie's house after drinking um all day goes gets grabs the gun uh, his dad's gun which super creepy that there was that note that cal left him that he knew he would see saying like you know enjoy being the man of the house now yeah but question when did Cal leave that note? I know. Did he I thought plan the same thing. that? Because he, it seemed like he kind of left very abruptly in the two episodes ago where he like pisses on the floor. Yeah, which was still there in this episode. Yeah. So why didn't you clean it up? Yeah. How shortly after was it the next day? Or it was it? Been, but still, like that smell <laughs> would be. Awful. Yeah. Why, why didn't you do it that night? I mean, I guess the whole house has gone to shit. Like the mom is just like smoking a cigarette, having ice cream, like, yeah, I'll piss on the floor. Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, well, so talk to me about what do you think Nate's going through right now? Um, right. So I, he, that shot, how that is composed of him sitting in the corner of Maddie's room and Maddie goes into the bathroom. We see Nate. It's, it's like a Hitchcockian sort of shot and it is so artistically beautifully done. Yes. But horrifying that we see this happening. We see the gun and I thought this was going to turn into like euphoria, true crime because oh, the sure. knives, the gun, all of this stuff was going on. Yeah. And <laughs> true. I mean, so yeah. Was it, you know, professor Plum in the <laughs> kitchen with the, the lead pipe? Uh, right. Man. But that's, I did not expect that at all. I didn't, I had yeah. no idea where that was going to go, but the fact that Nate did that and totally just manipulated Maddie is unforgivable yeah and but, he, yeah well i just want to say real quick i kind of find it comical now that she said oh i don't have the disc and he lays on her puts the gun to her head then to his yeah it empties all the bullets out and which i thought he left one in i there. thought he did too because I mean, why else would he do that right he just, well just for a dramatic effect yeah but it was funny how he he shoots it he twice it twice and then she's like okay it's in my purse 
But like, oh, wait, nice. Maddie, why'd you wait? To, like, you would have. Like, why did you let it go two shots before saying it? I mean, you know, yeah, that's so true. Like, I who knows what would happen in the moment if, like, are you really gonna do this again? And who knows? Maybe this like is. I don't, I don't know uh, if, yeah. whether she's like totally thinking about like, well, I'll do this on like the fifth time that I right. try and click this in the sixth chamber. Blood, I mean, but... or it was, she really wanted to kill him. Like she didn't care, but then realizing, oh wait, no, I do actually care if you die. I don't want to be the cause of that. It's just get off me. It's in my back. Yes. It was, yeah. it was just kind of a funny power move of like, she could have, have saved that situation earlier, but didn't. And then it took like, two or three shots before she finally said, okay, fine. I mean, yeah, to her credit, she's like freaking the fuck oh, out because she like has a gun. Yeah. That's the first time. I mean, that, yeah, it's, it's, this is another height that euphoria reaches, I think, where it's like, wow, Nate pulls a gun on Maddie. And uh, that's just so, while he knows that he is totally like scorched earth with her there now and that's yeah. why i think he you know, gets together with cassie um did you notice in maddie's room that there was that sign in her room that says smile you're on camera and that was another uh, thing too that like they're all being watched on camera whether it's maddie being watched at the babysitter's house mm. we'll find we'll, um, back when um ashtray is at the house and there's all the security cameras right. that are there right which he's they're not seen they're out of view um fez i mean um uh uh Faye, okay. uh <laughs> not one in the same so so there is i thought that was because we had just seen that clock shot right it's like oh yeah be careful there are people watching right and just the fact that she has the disc and that's the whole crux of what that is oh it, it, yeah that's a i didn't even put that together <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. Like <laughs> that was the crux of smile. You're on camera. That's mm -hmm. why we're in this mess. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Damn. Yikes. So, so Maddie is, uh, she is she's left the, a wreck. Yeah. Now. She's in the fetal position for the rest of the episode, mm -hmm. which it's so sad. And she was saying earlier to the, to the mother saying like, what, you don't like a fight. You don't like a fight. Like I kind of like a fight. She's, she thinks she likes the fight and the sparring and she thinks she's tough. She is, mm -hmm. but not to this degree. This isn't even a fight. It's just like, I, I can't. Death wish. It's a death wish. This is what it means when you say like, it's, it's not, you can't handle this. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than you. And so that I think is a turning point to where she's not going to see Nate as the guy who she's like, oh, well, we just had a fight and we'll get back together. It's like, no, this is what really happens when you can, uh, yeah a breakthrough for a character yeah totally um i mean this is also kind of speaking of nate his apology tour in a way yeah it did seem like he was trying to make amends with a lot of people that that he wronged it the apology tour <laughs> yeah 2022 <laughs> one night only right and <laughs> that line was funny where she he was like i'm not here to apologize you think i'd come with a gun like forcing you to accept my apology. Oh yeah. He says, this is, well, he almost he says that in like a joke, well, right? right? Cause yeah, he says like, th like this isn't me with a gun forcing you to accept my apology. And yet it very much is kind yes. of like it, it feels like in his weird messed up way, like this is as much as I love you. Like I need you to understand how serious I am. And I have a gun to my head. Um, uh, yeah. A lot. But then he moves on to Jules right after. Right. With the disc now, mm -hmm. drives right over to Jules's. Which was another, of course, storyline that we haven't heard about at all this season. Right. Like, at all. Nate and Jules hadn't even talked. Mm -mm. Didn't they, like, see each other at the party, I the think, New Year's party? Yeah. That was it. That was it. So, I'm like, oh, why is this all coming to a head right now? Yeah. It's all... We'll see. It's all happening here. So, he gives her the disc and... I, and he, there's also that moment, right, where he says uh, everything that I said uh, was true for what it's worth. Everything I said was true. And Jules responds too. She says, same here. She also acknowledges that what they had, what, it was just on uh, texting back and forth. Mm -hmm. They didn't know who was who. Um, and that makes, that maybe made it easier. They, they were able to live in that fantasy world 
And actually, I'm thinking about in those two special episodes between mm -hmm. season one and two, the one of Jules specifically, she's talking to the therapist and she was saying that she enjoyed that relationship. She said it was like her best relationship. I think she said it was like the best sex she's ever had or something. She did say that. Right? Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. and it was just pure fantasy. Yeah. So it's interesting that they do have this connection and he does maybe earn a teeny degree of her trust, trust back. Mm. for what it's worth yeah uh, yeah the we'll Nate jacobs apology tour <laughs> hopefully you're not on the receiving end of it you don't want to be apologized to because that means that you've uh, had some really terrible shit happen to yeah you. some tough encounters for sure <laughs> yeah yeah and all this is happening i just want to mention um that this is happening during this sort of beautiful storm there's this rain that's happening throughout the entire yeah, episode. It's, except, it's, except it's not raining at Lexi and Cassie's house. Yeah, I think you're right. I there mean, was that open I think that the door was error. open and it was like bright. Yeah, like hide the knives. It was uh -huh. not raining. She wasn't like out there soaked hiding knives in the bushes in the mud. Yeah. Like it for whatever that felt weird. Maybe I don't know if that was a mistake. It could have been just like, oh yeah, shoot, continuity or something. Maybe not. Euphoria. It seems Let's like tighten it up. Okay. <laughs> You're doing a lot. Do more. <laughs> DM us. Let me know if uh, that was a mistake or if that was on purpose. Yeah. It just felt weird because it was very, the rain was very persistent and very heavy throughout the entire episode. Yeah. yeah. Except for their house. Yeah. Maybe I don't, don't know if yeah, I don't know. there was much meaning there, but otherwise, <laughs> otherwise there were, there was just this persistent rain, but what Euphoria, they've almost like created this very singular look where the weather does not make sense. It's like no. through every window, it's this blaring. It's like this sunlight that you think is like, what time of day is it? Is it night or is it morning? Well, when Rue is going to sleep, she's like, all right, let's go to bed. Or Gia says, oh, can I sleep in bed with you tonight? Right. At the end, I just go, oh, yeah, come on in. Like bed? Yeah. It looks like it's noon. Yeah. And it's what? raining, but there's just this like sunshine that's yeah. directly outside. I don't know how they do it, but they... It, it, they create more of a tone or a mood versus mm -hmm. like, it's not like dark and stormy and like lightning. It's, it's still this, like almost we're living in this heavenly space, but there is this, this rain that's just drenching everyone um, and everything. So, uh, and yeah, it's drenching when Nate is in the, the, the car making his apology tour and then he ends up at Cassie's. And a great well, music yeah. moment here. Yeah. Um, great music moment. I hadn't heard this song before, but it's uh, Mazzy Star, the song Quiet, the Winter Harbor. And that is the song for this whole montage of him driving and all of these other characters reacting. He gets to Cass, or he texts Cassie, says, pack a suitcase, mm. come stay with me. I love you. She's so trusting with him. Yeah. I mean, she'll just follow him anywhere in a vehicle. Yeah, and, and she'll move in with him. She yeah. leaves her family behind who she can't stand, who she doesn't relate to, who don't support her. And now she she arrives at the Jacobs family house and, you know, waves to the mom. You know what I totally thought, which is so awful? I thought Nate was going to shoot her when he locked the door. Well, in yeah. Room. Did you think that Well, too? I thought she was in harm. I, I did think that, okay, that she was in harm. Like, he wow, locks the door and he has a gun. Right. It's like... Wait, he hasn't used it on Maddie, on Jules? Like, where is his head right now? And she's the one that kind of exploded his life. Yeah, right. I absolutely thought the same. Okay, but he okay, is thinking good. that, uh, that, yeah, that that she, but there he wants her. So she kind of puts up a fight, but then they start, you know, embracing, kissing. Right. So this is now their, um, this is now them. This is who he's going to be with. It's going to be an awkward Monday at school, if <laughs> I ask me. Awkward in homeroom. <laughs> yeah. And then the episode ends. We return full circle with Ali, with Ali, rather, and Rue and uh, and the, the family at right. the dinner table. And what was interesting, sorry to cut you off. No. I just have to interject because I did ask this at the end of the last episode. Do we think Rue hit rock bottom? And I was like, no. Right. She admits that she did. Right. And I kind of wonder like, okay, that, yeah, that was hell what you went. I would not want to go through that. I guess I believe her. Do you? I don't know. Do we, do you believe that she believes that she's hit rock bottom? I don't think for as wild as euphoria is as a show, I don't think that is her rock bottom. 
Right. I, I agree. And it's okay. so funny that they ask quite literally in the show, right. he asks her, do you think you've hit rock bottom? And all these, and, and that goes around the room. Like they're like, they're asking all these other people. And that's like the pivotal moment of he asks Gia, like, do you think that she's hit rock bottom or that she can get clean? And she's pretty skeptical. Yeah. And she says that there's like, what, like a 5% chance. And you know, why, why should I feel hopeful? And he has that great line, something like the hope is what Rue has to find. Mm, yeah. And it's so true, you know, addiction, that is, that's, it's up to that person. Um, and, and my God, that last shot, let's talk about that. Oh, it's, it's on the poor mother. It's on the mother. It's, it's, uh, it's her on the phone. She gets the phone call from, she's wanting to have Rue uh, admitted to like the inpatient mm -hmm. program. It's not looking like she's going to be able to join. And this camera is just slowly pulling back along the hallway. Mm -hmm. And it's just so heartbreaking. It does that move to where it shows her and uh, Rue and Gia in the bed. And then it keeps going and it does that super subtle little the blinds just do this little like like wind is, has just passed through like a mm -hmm. spirit or a ghost or something and like the light kind of shines through and the whole time you're hearing uh the mother give she's sobbing at this point saying you don't know my daughter is going to kill herself i get chills thinking about it. Yeah. that shot was yeah. so it was so sad because she's sleeping i thought that rue was going to be like hearing her on the phone and like also feel sad or gia was going to hear the mom but it was just so I'm tragic. I'm so glad that they didn't hear. No. It was just her mom's struggle. It was her mom's struggle. And you saw the like angelic uh, them mm -hmm. next to each other and just the dissolve into black. And how sad that you have to beg for help. Begging. Yeah. You know, yeah. begging to get help. And it's no like one a death sentence that, that yeah. she if she's not able to get this inpatient, then she knows that that she's going to wake up and it's going to be another day of hell. And so, uh, God. So concludes the episode six of season two. Womp womp. A great one. I mean, let, <laughs> sad downer. Give me a quick star rating. What did you think about Ooh. the episode? Like out of out of five stars <sighs> compared to other ones? Just overall, what I you... mean, I honestly, I do think that it felt a little bit forced in that so many things were being oh yeah remember this oh remember this storyline and this like a lot of sure. that happened in one so I, I didn't yeah love that um but I will say maybe like a three five yeah okay. three three five yeah it's at least aspiring to be a four star episode yeah yeah <laughs> I yeah I think so too I think that that some of those clunky mechanics of oh crap we have to get everyone back into the story somehow let's do it was a little clunky but so good to see yeah you talked about the mothers being so present in this episode and the children reaction um that I think that this it's it was still so gripping and still like nothing you see on tv elsewhere oh, no. so like yeah, I mean, it's at least a four star. It, it left me that well, that last shot was just mm -hmm. one of the best things I've seen like, yeah. in movies or TV all year. Like that was just great. So, wow. so that was great. Let's recap the recap with some quick categories. What we love Let's. to do, and um, yeah, I think that the first category, if you uh, can re can recall, is well, we uh, can do one. Um, I'm curious. Is oh, favorite. Needle a favorite moment. Okay, yeah, favorite moment. Yeah, do you have a favorite moment in the show? Any singular part? I, you know what I really liked? And this is very subtle, and I kind of just thought of it now. Mm -hmm. So in the flash, there's a flashback with Rue's mom. When right. she was a child, like the very beginning. She that was a shot. Christian, she grew up in church. There was a flashback of the mom in a church. It's like, oh, that looks like the church that Rue was Ooh. at. Ooh, okay. Where she hugs, you know, Labyrinth, Labyrinth who's the pastor. her dad. <laughs> the coolest pastor ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, her father figure. True. And part of me thinks, oh, that would be very cool if that was a, a quick little glimpse at Rue's mom and just Rue knowing, having that instinct of this is home, this is church, this is family, this is, yeah, where I belong. So that was a favorite moment just because it was so subtle. And maybe I'm reading into it, but I really liked that. Yeah, too. that was great. And we learn more about her backstory as well, which mm -hmm. is so deserved. Yeah. She's a fantastic actress alongside Rue, trade and punches. She is just right there. Right. 
And what about yeah, you, favorite? I mean, I gotta give it to Ollie. Those mm. scenes where he was just spitting wisdom, everything he said just made me like feel so like it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> and so I you should I do loved... a podcast, like a motivational podcast. Oh God, <laughs> Coleman, come on, man. <laughs> You got to do it, dude. The people want it. Um, did you have a favorite line? I think my favorite line of the the episode was Lexi's mom. I was Cassie's mom. It's like, oh, she needs a fucking exorcism. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I mean, second only to hide the knives in the bushes. <laughs> she you can had really the best lines. From so many. I mean, I'm going to be very uh, <laughs> symbolic. And I'll say my favorite line was Rue saying, I'm sorry. Sure. Because that was a long time coming and hearing her say that felt very nice on the ears. Love it. Great. <laughs> love, love it. Um, best needle drop moments. Not a ton of music in this yeah. episode, very sparing, but it also did have effective moments. I think that between the Mazzy star song that was played earlier, um, I, th I think that there was a, what was the song that, that Nate's mom is like, rocking out to I, I made a quick note of it um in never gonna get it now you're never gonna get it you're never gonna get oh, it she's yeah. like having her own like dance party yeah that was kind of funny but that was like the only other song um except for the end of the episode well is that your pick one you have talked about three well no i only mentioned them but okay. i'll hone in on the one i mean i feel like do we have the same one is it the last is song it yeah end? the title credit or the, the end credit would be my pick for needle drop yeah same here so okay. okay i wanted to get to that point <laughs> of the the needle drop um what was it yeah. peace 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 but peace as in peace be with you peace as in piece of a puzzle yeah how you spell it uh bill evans is the composer it, it was yeah it was beautiful it was it was the much needed uh come down song yeah. that was instrumental and just piano and felt very soothing and like a hug. Mm -hmm. And we definitely all needed <laughs> that. Yeah, some peace in our life. That was oh, just a beautiful song. We'll for sure return to that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Was there a memeable moment within this episode that? I mean, the one that I think I mentioned earlier was Cassie in a bathtub with a face mask and <laughs> tear stain. I, for the life of me, I can't think of like, words to go along that but just that image i think could be used for something like girls night in when you're single <laughs> and you're just like i don't know yeah <laughs> like, yeah, yeah I, I definitely down that road yeah of... or valentine's day tomorrow uh, right Monday, Monday, yeah tomorrow <laughs> yeah valentine's day right around the corner and <laughs> this is what day it when looks you're like single. <laughs> when you're single through the oh i think i might retweet that one <laughs> uh yeah that's great memeable moment um i i mean i would just want to to put all of those things that cat says together like her, uh. her response <laughs> in like getting out of this relationship like right. you know or, or like you know i'm calling into work sick on monday because and it's like the shot of her <laughs> like um i have a brain disorder i, I think i'm dying i think it'd be easier <laughs> for you if we did <laughs> you know I, I don't want you to get too close right and <laughs> don't google it you're just gonna start don't. to think about it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah some good stuff there oh that's good all right i like that yeah Come most on. wtf what the oh, fuck gosh. moments yeah i'll i'll start by saying yeah. i think that the most what the fuck moment was Nate finding this gun and pulling this gun and the Russian yeah. roulette scene was truly like, I've seen some shit. We've seen some happen here. This was crazy. I think so too. That was the biggest for sure. What the fuck moment. Also the, the hidden camera in the mother's mm. dressing room was weird, but right. as far as just intensity, I think mm -hmm. the Nate one for sure, hands down. Yeah, the intensity moment, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oof. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting warm in here now. <laughs> yeah. Like, let us know your reactions to what are some of your favorites categories we just mentioned. Uh, how anxious are you in this moment? Oh my God. Yeah. And what do you think is going to happen in the next episode and the finale? That's only, we have two more episodes left before yeah. season two is done. Yeah. And I was 
listening to this um, this podcast separately from Euphoria, but it was talking about the nature of streaming TV shows versus um, like something you'd see like on cable, a cable TV show, a single season might have somewhere between 12, 15, maybe 18 or 20 episodes mm-hmm. in an entire season. But with a lot of these streamers, streamers are now really only doing these like eight episode, 10 episode seasons because they want like constant turnover. So it's a lot of story and it's shortened into less episodes than we really have ever seen before. So right. let me ask you this. Do you think that Euphoria would benefit from like a bigger season or do you like just Ooh. eight episodes Every something big is happening every time. I mean, I think for a show like Euphoria, it needs to be big. Mm. Every episode needs to be something major because that is the point of it is to be over the top and insane and unbelievable. True. Quite frankly. But personally, I kind of wish maybe there was 10 episodes. So this episode didn't feel so jammed. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good point. I'd agree. Do you have any specific predictions that you think might happen in the hmm. well, seven episode? Lori still doesn't have her money or her drugs. So that's right. She will be back. Let's not this, forget. The peace, the peace, peace that we felt at the end of this episode will not yes, last. That's just an intermission. Yeah. Before the dun 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 dun. Yeah. Lo- oh, gosh. There's so much. Lori will come back. Police will go after Fez. Yep. Um. Yeah, because I think Faye's about to rat out Fez yeah. for the whole operation there. Yeah. I mean, she is staying there, and and now Faye. her, yeah, it's <laughs> we knew that you, that that you were you, you were trouble you were trouble all along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's gonna like be the like un, the the un, like the one the come down of like everyone or just like <laughs> yeah 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 bring everyone down exactly. I guess. And hopefully Rue gets admitted somewhere to some place because if not then she yeah. uh then she's in dire straits and she doesn't have jewels there was a funny moment in the video the voiceover where she is like oh and then jewels now yet well actually like let's not talk about them and then it just yeah goes that was away good them. Uh, yeah but Do you have a prediction um well nate and cassie being together is certainly interesting i think that maddie is uh she's going to be shell shocked from this. She's not going to know how to respond forward. Maybe it's like a new friend dynamic out of this. Who knows? Maybe mm-hmm. we'll see new friends kind of realign and stuff and like Rue and who knows Rue and Maddie could start, you know, like bonding or something like that. Who really knows? Uh, I think we'll have to tune in next week. All to find right. Out. I think we do. <laughs> Thank you again so much for joining another incredible episode of Euphoria. It's mm. been a joy to recap this with you. Yeah. With you. Same. And let us know what you think. If you have any predictions, drop them in the comments because we would love to, yeah, just get different perspectives. Yeah. It was sure. really great to read last week's episodes, comments of everyone's experience with, I mean, certainly addiction was like a really big one and yeah. people have been really forthcoming with their experiences. And just to see that makes it feel like, oh yeah, that's what the show does. It's, it's fake, but it gets people to talk about really real stuff. Yeah, totally. Yes. So until then, this has been great. The Hollywood Critics Association, as well as Cinemacy signing off for the night. Thank you again mm-hmm. for joining us. We will see you next week. Ciao. <laughs>